It's recording. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, uh, by weekly meeting. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen uh, with the notes. Um, so, um, uh, it was just two of us uh, today here. Uh, me and, and Andreas, so we're going, I can be the note taker, we can take notes later. Um, so Andre, can you put your name on the list of attendees, please? Up there. Yes, give me a second. Um, okay. So on, we can, perhaps Andre, you have the more updates. Do you want to start with your? Yeah, sure. With your updates. Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, in the list here of concluded uh, parts, I've been working on the workshop um, that we gave on the Centralized Web Summit as well as in the lab day. And um, essentially it was a local to do application uh, that we managed to convert to a decentralized version of it uh, by, by going through several, several steps and also comparing the complexity that it is uh, 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 between like comparing between a centralized version and decentralized version essentially the centralized version will be a lot more complex and it will require a lot more uh, components actually um, so it, it was a good ex exercise for ourselves in, in terms of testing the peer star app library as well as to demonstrate um, how could adapts look like without the blockchain as well because it, it doesn't require the blockchain at, at all um, so there's a full there's a full uh, workshop uh, that you can try there as well in the, in the github um, i think the, the notes have the link right yes yes uh, so so if if anyone is interested uh, in doing the workshop in in, uh, in your local computer computer and uh, you can do that by following the steps on the github um, the GitHub readme, uh, or even you can wait for the YouTube video uh, that we'll be releasing uh, soonish. Um, so I've been working on that. We have actually presented that me and, and Pedro in the decentralized web and the, the lab day. Um, I think it went well, Pedro. Would you agree? Yes, I think it went well. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, it worked. Um, yeah, it worked like it worked everything in terms of real time collaboration and even offline. Um, we we literally went offline and, and when we came up online, everything synchronized correctly. So I was kind of afraid, but it worked quite well. Um, so that that was it. Um, and of course, I've been working on Discussify for for um, uh, past few weeks before that. Um, so in terms of it, I've. Uh, bootstrap the style guide, which is essentially um, a, a repository that contains all the visual components that will be used uh, by the application. Uh, I can actually show that. If, uh, I can share the screen, right? Yes. Uh, let me show this one. Um, can you see it? Not yet. We selected the, the screen. Oh, yeah, it's okay. so essentially is is a um, uh, repository of um, GitHub. Uh, sorry, of uh, React components that we can use on the, the the app itself, like the buttons, the loaders, um, these these little component that will open the, the extension, uh, like models and so on. So I've been working on all of this um, so that it's really easy now to take on the application and, and just use all of these components. Um, moreover, let me continue over the list. I will stop the share screen perhaps. Okay. So uh, I I've also bootstrapped the extension app itself, which is essentially um, a Chrome extension. And I'm now, um, in progress of integrating uh, the uport login um, and also i'm going to uh, implement the public the public discussion list with the readability write edit and remove so that you can add comments edit your comments remove comments uh, and so on and of course i'm going to use the peer star app library with um, a crdt a special crdt for for the index and then i will lazy load the comments which are 
essentially files added to APFS, and they, they will be lazy loaded or lazy fetched uh, whenever the commands are appearing on the screen. On the screen. And uh, my next steps are essentially um, related to, to uh, my goals on this part, which is identity and authentication. Um, which is basically a follow-up of the RFC that, I've, uh, that, I've, that we have created uh, in, the, in the last month, I think. And um, essentially, it's the implementation of the, um, the strategy that is uh, written there. And I think it's all. Oh, do, do you want, uh, do you want me to just show the, quickly show the to-do app? Or? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, you can show, uh, well, the, the, the finalized product, or you want to show yeah, the final? Okay, I can show the yeah. final. I'm going to share, okay. the share the screen. So this this is basically um, this was basically the, the application that we demoed in the workshop at both Centralized Web Summit and um, Web Day. So I have here um, two browsers just to simulate two peers. Uh, on the left. There is a Chrome, a Chrome browser, and on the right, Safari browser. So what we've done is taken this, uh, we, we've taken this local Todos app, which is a known uh, application called Todo MPC, and essentially uh, we transform into a decentralized application where you can have real-time collaborations. Like I can add a Todo here, and it will synchronized between the, the two replicas, as you can see, um, like Polkadot or PyCandies. We can like perform edit operations. We can uh, perform remove operations. We can perform edit operations as well, like buy some candies. And everything works in real time uh, in a collaboration, <laughs> and also it works well offline as well. Um, so that was essentially it. I'll stop sharing. And I'm going to mute because it, it's very loud here. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your update, uh, Andre. Uh, I'm going to share my my screen um, so I can start sharing some notes. Hi, Mark. <laughs> right. So, cool. Uh, so last uh, last week, as, as Andre uh, said, we were on a centralized web summit and on IPFS uh, Lab Day. Uh, was a full week, and before that, we were preparing for that. Mainly, Andre did all the work on on the uh, workshop itself. Marco did uh, some some preparation on the slides. Marco Oliveira and uh, I did the the Pure Star app. Um, features and bug fixing that had to go along the way. So a lot of kicking the tires by Andre on, on Pure Star app, uh, and we got it working. And meanwhile, I corrected some, did some fixes, so mainly on membership and reconnect, reconnection, so resyncing after uh, it being down. Also several improvements, even that the local area network had um, a very low uh, pipe to, to the uh, very low internet connectivity there. We had to make sure that our dApps worked uh, using local LAN. Uh, so it um, I enabled Peer Star app to use two things. One is use circuit relay. Uh, so if, for people that don't know, circuit relay is a mechanism on IPFS through which you can have a protocol and talk to other nodes through a certain, a certain node. And for, and for that, we use the co-IPFS node uh, on the local network and to which ever uh, a known peer on the local network to which the dApps would connect to besides the WebSocket Star uh, internet server. Uh, they would connect to them and then uh, we would also use that peer to discover new peers so and then connect through circuit relay to those peers that we found that belonged to the app uh, that we were building, in our case, uh, PeerPad or the to do MVC app or uh, another app that uh, was being deployed by Arcadi on the, um, on the local network of the centralized web summit. Um, so, a lot of kinking the tires, a lot of uh, fixing, uh, and this part of uh, land connectivity. Also, um, new features like CRDTZ meeting a change event uh, that had that's specified 
where the change occurred. That's something that some, some apps uh, required. Uh, still ongoing process of, of making a lot of these improvements, um, but, but some, some already delivered. Uh, so it was a very busy last few, last few weeks. Uh, on Peerstar app also, I wanted to make sure that uh, Peerstar app uh, uh, could handle the, the scale. And so I introduced uh, performance tests, which are now on the main repo of Peerstar app under test slash performance. They're basically the, the test convergence time with a swarm of how many peers you want, 10, 20, 30, 40 peers. And, and uh, one test tests whether uh, tests concurrent changes um, and how long it takes to after the, the changes have stopped to converge. And the other one is just one uh, node that makes all the changes and how long does it take for all the network to, to converge to those changes. So multi-writer and single writer, uh, you, both use cases, I added performance tests and they're, they're, they're looking good. On that front, um, I'm going to uh, consider reintroducing WebRTC. Uh, to make it more decentralized. Right now, we're using a, a protocol that JS IPFS provides, well, lip 2 p provides, which, which is called WebSocket Star. So uh, it's kind of, because browsers cannot connect to each other, we can have to, um, to think to two ways of connecting to each other, either through WebSockets, and, and the WebSockets do a, a, a function of relaying uh, um, the, the connections, or through WebRTC uh, Star, which only requires a signaling server for peers to find about each other and then they connect directly to, to each other. Uh, Peter, if you had, if we had like um, that already implemented on a peer star app, uh, even if I went offline in the workshop presentation, uh, things will, will have worked, right? Because I was in the same local computer or local LAN. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Know, as, long, as long as there's, there's not in WebRTC, uh, as long as there were, there's a network uh, connection, doesn't have to go through a central server. The same would be true. Uh, um, the same would be true if the both nodes were connecting through a local WebSocket Star server uh, in the local uh, network. But since they were connecting through uh, uh, WebSocket Star server that was on the internet. They disconnected as soon as it yeah, as you, uh, disconnected the uh, uh, Wi-Fi, um, and in that case, so it's on the Wi-Fi. But if I were using WebRTC, uh, both uh, browsers will be still communicating to, to each other because it's on a local host, and there's still network available. Um, and yeah, you're you're correct. Yeah, the, the, if if we manage to do that in the new web, it will be quite rare to, to do that. They will people will be whoa, how is that even working? <laughs> yes, we have to make sure because our RTC has a poor uh, scalability story, poor performance story on on the browsers. But now that we finally have connection management and uh, topology formation uh, on PSR app, so not if the node doesn't connect to every node that participates in the app. Uh, just connects to a few nodes that, that participate in the collaboration. Using a DS set. Uh, using a DS, uh, uh, a DS set, so uh, uh, using that principle of, of forming a gossip um, topology that is, um, that, that is performant. Um, I wouldn't say optimal, but that is, that is at, at least performant. Uh, we are now in the position of trying WebRTC and seeing how that uh, scales in, in, in practice. And so we'll have WebRTC specific uh, tests. Of course, I think we'll have problems in Node.js land where the WebRTC story is not very stable, but that's something for us to see uh, in, in the future. Um, besides, um, Besides uh, the Web Summit, we also did the same presentation on Day, as Andre, Andre said, but a shorter version of that presentation, which will eventually be uh, released to the public and we will be sharing that. Um, so what's next for me? Uh, PeerPad is a recent bug that was in, uh, introduced here because of the syncing. Uh, I think the bug was introduced today uh, that didn't allow us to use PeerPad for today's um, uh, meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I hope next meeting we will be able to use PeerPad. Uh, I'll make sure that we have specific end-to-end uh, -end, 
uh, tests for uh, for that so that we don't have this regression uh, again. Um, Pure Star app, uh, I'm pushing on, I'm uh, kind of blocked in reality of using an official IPFS version because of the way that we're managing the, the network. Uh, there is always a pull request on the way. So uh, we're in a good position perhaps in two weeks to having that, that solved. I also want to work on a network visualization tool, which is something that will allow us to see how the network topology is forming graphically. And this was inspired by a lot of network visualizations that we saw during the Web Summit and Lab Day. And I want to have this for Peerstar app and also for PFS in general uh, and lip 2 p in general, but particularly for Peerstar apps to see how the nodes connect to each other and how they exchange information, uh, what type of connection, whether it's lazy or, um, or, um, or eager. So I want to have this uh, visualization tool, which will be, will be should be, it's not just because it's fun to watch and build, it's mostly because uh, I want to make sure that um, to, to be able to, to debug what's happening in the network in, uh, in real use cases um, and see if the, the, the topology that is forming is, is, is well connected, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so far, it helps like uh, when new peers ha uh, are, are joined and whenever like a peer disconnects and if you go offline and online again if using not using web rtc of course if things work well it allows allows you to get a real-time feeling of the topology and if yes. you're, it's, it's as expected yes yeah well, and then next then the plan is to incorporate that on on as a side window or an add-on on on on, on apps built on, yeah, it on could be it could be like a dev tools uh, yes a dev tools dev kind of kind of thing yeah. where you, you just uh, for instance you want to see uh, who you're connected to someone is having difficulty connecting uh, you can see the even the names of the nodes the people that are behind the, each one of the peers and see if they're known to be there or not and it, who are they connecting to and what types of connection they have and what is the it's like statistics for message count etc so a, lot, a lot of metrics um, uh, uh, should, should be able to be displayed there uh, without much tinkering I, I hope uh, but that's that's a, a, a plan that, that we have. It's uh, kind of a huge project. <laughs> Could be a huge project. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's well, it, it's, it's going to start uh, small, just to, enough to first to be able. My plan is first to be able to to to, to do this to debug um, debug uh, topology and connectivity and, uh, and topology formation on collaborations because now that you there's peer pad you have. Uh, to do MVC, people are, will, will be using uh, a lot of examples. You're building Discussify. Uh, that's something that that will be become, I think, very useful for for people, and even if it's just very simple to begin with. Cool. And uh, for me, I think that's all. This last two two weeks updates. Um, uh, do you have any question, Andre? Uh, I think you you did, you forgot to mention the um, the persistent part that you the issue that you created. So that, yes, uh, <laughs> that's a very good uh, pure star. So various improvements, um, pure star app. That there's the plan. Pure star app. Um, so basically, uh, what Andre is talking about is the persistence uh, through the DHT. So the um, well, one of the problems of, of using um, CRDTs, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, applications on that don't rely on a blockchain, for instance, is persistence. So if you do some change and then close a laptop, uh, even if you share, a, for instance, a peer pad link with someone else, uh, they may not be able to get to your latest version because you have laptop is closed, no one has persisted that yet. And so a solution for that would be to have a pinning server. A pinning server uh, would, for instance, follow a certain CRDT, even not knowing what the operations, the internals of the CRDT were, but at least would they would persist uh, all the, the, the messages being exchanged so that it could be fetched uh, from a new node. An alternative to that's a bit centralized, well, that's awfully centralized, to be honest. 
another alternative would be for peers to save their state into the DHT. And like that, you would provide that information on, on the URL that they share. And that entry in the DHT would have all the information required for a new node or a node to bootstrap its participation, would contain membership, would contain um, uh, the internal state of the, the, the CRDT, would be enough for a new peer, as I said, to bootstrap its internal state uh, without uh, having to have other peers connected in the, in the, in the network. Um, and that's the plan. Uh, there's an issue on peer star app for, for that. Uh, and right now I'm depending on the question on APFS uh, implementation of the HD. Yeah, I, I will comment on that as well when I got some time. Uh, I think uh, the overall strategy is of course more centralized, but I think it won't uh, work for other use cases like if you can't really put the CID um, on the on the link, the the BHT entry, uh, you won't be really uh, you can't really resume uh, whatever is there. There's some use cases where putting that on the link is not feasible. And in those situations, it, it, it won't work. Uh, what well, what can you elaborate? What what situations won't? For instance, it's, it's, I think it's okay for Peerpa to put uh, the latest um, um, entry of the HD to resume, mm -hmm. but um, let's say that you have a discussify uh, listing uh, where maybe it's not okay to put the entry there. Like uh, you have the discussify. Uh, let's say this, let's imagine the URL will be discussify.io. Uh, slash uh, discussion slash and some hash that um, is a hash of the discussion like a link could be a YouTube video could be whatever mm -hmm. and then you, you, you have to put uh, the, the DH, DHT entry or the CID on the link as well uh, perhaps there, there are some use cases as well where that is not um, very user friendly I would say or even SEO friendly or whatever I don't know uh, perhaps we, we should we should consider that this case as well. I will think about it uh, more in depth, and maybe I will pinpoint some uh, or point some use cases as well where that could not be a solution. Um, but but I need to think about it in, in more depth. Yes, um, there are. Yeah, I see that there are advantages to uh, to having a centralized a centralized version. If you have a lot of participants, that may complicate things further because um, each one will be saving different states onto the, the, the DHT. Um, I think also the UI UX has, has plays a, some part on that because saving now has some meaning. Saving to the DHT has some meaning that is an asynchronous operation. It's not something that right now is transparent and magic because uh, persistence is, is local. I, I just remember one use case, Pedro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let, let's say that you have, uh, that you enter this classified and, and I'm saying the public uh, site that uh, will be developed after the extension. And let's say that you have a little input where you put the, any link sure. that you want to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you don't really know uh, the latest version or, or the CID or the DHT entry of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's a use case for instance right uh, you don't know the CID but you can't you can, you can, it's not the CID uh, so you'll have to there is a name on, on, on that so it will be a well known name that contains we'll, we'll have to it's this kind of uh, like brainstorming but it has to work with the name. It's, you, don't, you don't have, it's not a, um, or a hash of, of, of a URL, for instance. In that case, the name of the state should be saved under, um, under the hash of the URL, for instance. Uh, and that's how peers will save their state into and would bootstrap the state from. Of course, they, they, this is last writer wins. It's only this. This could be improved, I guess. To, to um, uh, but DHT doesn't doesn't you cannot save into the DHT save a CRDT into the DHT because DHT is is 
these uh, um, last writer wins, unless we, we come up with, with a different protocol that some peers have to implement. Uh, the other option is, is to have a pinning service that is more decentralized, like a head of pinning protocol, which are already IPFS kind of has, but is, is, is a different use case for it's for pinning, pinning static files, no, not pinning uh, CRDTs. Um, I think it's good to, to, to bring that discussion offline and yeah, yeah. 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 brew this a bit the, more. Yeah, I'll comment on the issue as soon as I Thank have. you, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate that. Um, any more questions, uh, Andrea? Um, I think it's all. I think it's all. Uh, we need to like offline discuss. I uh, give give uh, um, like go offline and also discuss the um, the effort that want to put on the um, in identity and authentication in parallel with uh, with the discussify as well. But we'll discuss that offline. Yes. Um, I'm kind of divided right now. I, I, I have the discussify and I need to do the, the tasks that I listed here. And as well, of course, um, I need to, to have something implemented to, to, com to accomplish the goal of the third part of OKR. Yeah. Yes, I, I think, I think um, yes, I think yeah, we, we can discuss that, that, that offline. Um, but but uh, I think I think it would be nice to have uh, to have something like like discussify. I know it, it really depends on on the effort that we're planning to to apply here, and and then see and, and then make a decision. Um, but but we can take that offline with with, with the vid. Yeah, um, more questions. No. Okay. So meeting adjourned. Uh, I'll be posting this video and these notes on the issue. Uh, thank you, Andre, for participating and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.